everyone. Today we're going to be sharing with you a kitchen remodel using the existing cabinets and floors. Welcome to Emily and Laura. I'm Emily. And I am Laura. Please like and subscribe down below. Right now, doing a kitchen remodel during the pandemic is very difficult for a lot of people, mainly because there is a shortage of materials. But people still want to update their homes because they're living in their homes more now than they've ever lived in their homes before. So we're going to share with you this remodel that we updated the kitchen while using the client's existing cabinetry. And floors. And floors. It's a great before and after. So stay tuned to the end because we will show you side by side before and after. At the end of all of our videos, we're gonna be sharing with you one of our favorite things. So if you hang out with us until the end of the video, you'll see our very first one. <laughs> and also product links will be listed below. The current kitchen was dark and outdated. To update the kitchen and make it feel current, we needed to bring the cabinets all the way to the ceiling. One thing I really like to do in kitchens is if you have that dead space above the cabinetry, is to get rid of that space and build them up to the ceiling, which draws the eye up and not into a dead space. Yeah, the dead space, what is it good for? Yeah, nothing. People hold knickknacks, yeah. things that collect dust and oily residue. Right. It really does no one any good. No, that's so true. <laughs> and it, it looks so much better. It makes the cabinets feel like they're custom. Yes. So, but not in every kitchen can you do this because a lot of people's ceiling height, heights are only eight, you know, feet. And in an eight foot kitchen, you wouldn't, you can still bring your cabinets to the ceiling, but you don't need to soft it. Yeah. If your cabinets are above 11 feet, you really can't take your cabinets all the way to the ceiling because they become useless. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you are going to have some dead space above your cabinets, but you can still create a soffit, which gives your cabinets a very custom feel to them. And this home that we're showing, it was about nine foot ceilings? It was. Yeah. Yeah. The ceilings were nine foot. So it allowed us to create that soffit, take those cabinets up to the ceiling. Uh, before we could do that, we did have to do some modifications to accommodate our clients new appliances. And some of these uh, modifications were at the range, we removed the cabinets that were at the cooktop mm -hmm. and we that gave us our opening for our range to slide in. Above, we had an under cabinet vent liner, which is something that you would see- In like, a condo. Yes. In an apartment. Yeah. And this is a big, beautiful home. I yeah. mean, that was something they did back then, but that is, Gone. Mm -hmm. Gone. Mm -hmm. And this was the focal point. When you came into the space and you looked at the kitchen, the first thing that you saw was the range wall, which would not necessarily range wall. Then it was the cooktop wall, but it's going to become the range wall. Yeah. So we needed that to be the focal point of the kitchen. So to do that, we got rid of those cabinets that housed that liner and that gave us our space for our vent hood. But our cabinets on the left and right were too large. So the way to do that is, as we removed all the crown on all the cabinetry, we downsized those cabinets and just had new doors made for those two cabinet boxes. And that way we could still use the existing cabinet boxes and just had new doors made. So smart. And that created the space for our vent hood. From there, we have the kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. and beautiful sink clients really Love wanted it. a farmhouse sink mm -hmm. so we had to downsize those doors so those had to be remade so now we're looking at what three sets of doors so mm -hmm. six pair six doors right so the other modification that we had to make was at the ovens and the refrigerator and those were super minor the refrigerator was like a half inch too small yeah and the ovens were about the same nothing so, that a little trim can't take care that's of. exactly <laughs> right that's exactly make right. it till you make it right that's right <laughs> and that is the best trim is your friend when yes. you're remodeling and you're using existing cabinets trim is your friend and it was our friend in this kitchen. So we use the trim around the ovens and we use the trim. You can't even see it. It's seamless and mm -hmm. it's hiding those dead space, that empty space that we had around those appliances. So the big elephant in the room was the desk. This desk was just a clutter. I mean, it was the place where people were coming in, throwing the mail, the keys, whatever they had in their hands and then it would just accumulate and it just created this clutter look inside the mm -hmm. kitchen 
and it was useless because the clients weren't using it so what they really wanted was a beverage station yeah so what we did is we took that lower cabinet out completely there was no way to modify it so we took that cabinet out and we made it at for the beverage fridge that we put in there but the upper cabinets we actually kept we just took the doors off and if you'll notice it had a mail cubby yeah we kept the mail cubby and it's now on the inside of the cabinets why did we keep it well one because we didn't want to have to take the upper cabinets down yeah and two because it became a great place to put bar utensils yes and so you can just store your bar utensils in there very nicely they fit perfectly wine opener your little um cap on your wine there's yeah, lots of little things stirs. yeah we yeah. have all kinds Drink of tags, stuff in there. lots of stuff mm -hmm. yeah exactly we got new doors but we got doors that needed glass panels now here's another way that we were able to you know do that cust these custom doors and save some money yeah is we actually bought the glass panels online <laughs> and they that's amazing yeah i mean they have so many they have a plethora of different designs that you can choose from which is awesome yeah and we got them in two weeks yes. so we ordered these these glass panels and the cabinet company told us how big the glass panels needed to be for those doors and we gave that information over to the company and there you go then yeah. when the doors came in they put the panels in and here you've you've got this beautiful gorgeous. beverage station now. gorgeous and we, so much more useful for the family yes right? yeah. i mean they had younger kids maybe back when they bought the house and now mm -hmm. everyone's older everyone wants espresso mm -hmm. cocktails whatever drink of choice is but yeah. you know that's just going to be used and more pretty yeah Oh, it is a lot prettier, yeah. no doubt. And yeah. it's no longer being used as a clutter station for everything that comes in. We painted the interior of those cabinets white. This is really important when you're doing glass cabinets. Mm -hmm. um, two things that you want to do. You either want to paint it the color of the cabinet or you want to put glass shelves in. We chose to paint it white. And the reason is because the backsplash in the kitchen was going to be white. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gave it the seamless feel inside the kitchen, made it very cohesive to the space. That was all the modifications that we made inside the space. So then the next thing that we did was all of the new countertops. Oh, gorgeous. So we picked this amazing quartzite countertop for the island. The island was a big square inside of the space, and it commanded a lot of attention. Yes. So it needed something really special. Focal. Mm -hmm. A focal point. Yeah. So we have this quartzite, mm -hmm. which is absolutely gorgeous. Why quartzite is so wonderful is because it mimics marble a lot but it's not as porous yes. and as fragile. Yes. So it's a lot more family friendly yeah. and easy to live with. And red wine friendly. And we love our marble. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we yes. love marble, we do a lot of marble, but for some families it's not very conducive to their lifestyle. And this is a way of giving them that kind of feeling. The perimeter we did in a quartz material. We wanted to obviously save some money. Quartzite mm -hmm. is a, a lot more expensive material than this specific quartz that we put on the perimeter. Yeah. And that allowed to keep that cost down in this remodel as well. We did a quartz all around the perimeter in a white. It does have a very soft pattern. You can't really notice it until you come up on it, so it doesn't fight the island. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the backsplash, oh. we did something really cool, which, which was we used elongated modern subway tile in a matte and a polished finish. The tile already had a texture in it, kind of had a wave. But it gave it even more texture and dimension. It did. It's amazing. And the light reflecting it, mm -hmm. it almost kind of glistens. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Yeah. It makes the room feel, uh, creates light inside the space because yeah. it creates shadows and light yes. from the matte and the gloss. 
and it creates it's, it's a very subtle you're not really sure what you're seeing you're like it's kind of fake in your eye you know something's going on there and you know it's great but you're not really sure what it is <laughs> yeah. and then you walk up on and then you realize oh there's two different finishes and it's in a random pattern it's not any kind of specific pattern and it just did a lot for the kitchen. It did. And then we can't forget the other focal point of that room was that light fixture above the island. Very special. Beautiful light fixture. Yeah. And it didn't have that before. No, it didn't have any light fixture. It just had can lighting in the ceiling. Mm-hmm. We can't hide the fact that the island is huge and it was commanding a lot of attention. Yeah. So we needed to give it its own jewelry. Yes. And the way that we did that, its own moment in the kitchen, is we put this wonderful light pendant on. And I just think it really made all the difference into the space. It did. You and know? then you have the range, you have the light, and then the gorgeous faucet with the farmhouse sink. Yes. That yeah. little bling of gold coming yeah. through. Yeah, oh. we did use gold. We used gold finishes throughout the light. Fixture is bronze and gold to give mm-hmm. that mixed metal finish. Mm-hmm. And then, yes, that matching hardware that you had to kind of retrofit to the doors, right? Before you paint the cabinets, you putty the holes from the the hardware that was on there previously, yeah. then you paint the cabinets, you prime paint them, and mm-hmm. you can't even see those holes anymore. And that way you can put on any size hardware onto the cabinets. Yeah, so you don't always have to have it picked out before mm-hmm. you're done with the project and like, oh, okay, or before you're doing your painting. That's right. You can pick them out when they mm-hmm, strike your eye. Yeah. During the project time. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other huge, huge factor in this space was the floors. I mean, they started off so orange and red yeah. and dark. So the floors are birch and they have a lot of movement in them. Mm-hmm. Birch yeah, just has, when you stain it, kind of gets a muddled kind of look to it. And the floors were stained previously to accommodate the kitchen cabinets, mm-hmm. and which both had oxidized over time and gotten really bright in <laughs> yeah. color. Um, so we knew early on that that floor, the existing flu- floor color, was not going to work with the gray painted cabinets. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a great uh, cabinet color. It's called Galveston and it is a brown gray so it's really warm yeah so we sanded down all the floors these floors go all the way through the main level of the home and we stain them in a brown gray stain and i think it's just gorgeous Well, even right now with the pandemic i mean it's hard to get any kind of wood flooring so this is a great way to you know update the space Mm -hmm. immensely Mm -hmm. and it totally went throughout the rest of the home on that main floor thanks so much for watching our video today we welcome comments comments if you have any questions if you have any questions about things that uh we did in this kitchen or maybe some questions that you might have about um other ways to remodel a kitchen without having to completely rip everything apart because that's really hard during a pandemic. You have a shortage of materials, and on top of shortage of materials, everybody's inside the house right now because everybody's working from home. The majority of people are working from home, and so it's really hard to undergo a remodel. And don't forget to set your notifications so that you get um, notified when we have our next video up, which will be shortly. Thanks a lot. Here's one of our favorite things. Emily and Laura's favorite things. Yes, Emily and Laura's favorite things. We're loving this rug right now because it's a great fall transition rug to bring inside of your home. It has a lot of grays and blacks and a little bit of rust or caramel in it. It just fits perfectly with your pumpkins and your mums and all of your other things. But it's also very current for interiors right now. So if you have a home that's in that boho, Scandinavian, California, this would be a great rug to put inside your home. Yeah, and just so happens, it will be featured in one of our upcoming videos. Yes, it will. Yeah, so you'll get to see this in full size. Yeah, and it's affordable, it's very durable, and we will link it down below.